welcome to this video for International Relations Paper 1, that is Section 6, Berlin Wall Crisis, one of the first key topics on this paper. The first, in fact. So, why does the Berlin Wall Crisis happen? Well, it all starts by looking at this map of Germany by here. You can see Berlin is over there somewhere in East Germany, which is Soviet-controlled. This, however, is a city divided into four zones. So there is an American section in Berlin, surrounded by Soviet territory. This is a problem. Why? Firstly, Khrushchev needs to show his strength. You might remember 1956, Hungarian uprising. He's had problems in Poland as well. He needs to show the Russian governor that he is a strong man, and he can squeeze on Berlin to make sure that happens. Secondly, emigration from East Germany is now a disaster. Three million people since 1961 have legged it over the border into West Berlin to get plane tickets to the West and disappear and have been capitalist West. This is a propaganda nightmare. He cannot let this go on. Finally, he therefore demands the withdrawal of US troops from Berlin to show himself as a strong man and to hopefully close that exit ticket to the West. So, what happens next? Well, this is a lovely picture of West Berlin. Doesn't it wonderful? Trams, shops, it's a capitalist paradise. Bad news for Khrushchev. So, the Americans are not going to give up West Berlin. No chance. But, similarly, they're not prepared to go to war over it. This means they start to talk to each other. Start off with Geneva, 1959. Not a great deal happens. Pretty much sets the foundations to have a second meeting in Camp David which is significantly in the US. It's one of the president's private little retreats. So Khrushchev pops on a plane, goes over, it's 10959, Camp David. Again, not a great deal happening. Paris is one of the big ones. We're going to look at it in more detail on the next slide, and Vienna also. So Paris. Now, Eisenhower goes there, hoping for something called open skies, which means we're going to agree to allow spy planes to fly over each other's territory to make sure no one's preparing for war. The Russians haven't really agreed to this, so that's a bit of a problem. Uh, Eisenhower and Khrushchev meet up, and nine days before the conference, Eisenhower's jumped the gun a bit. He sent a U-2 spy plane over Russia, and it got shot down, piloted by Gary Powers, lovely little detail for the eight stars. This makes Khrushchev furious. He goes in saying, we never agreed to allow you to send spy planes over Russian territory. You're sending spy planes over Russian territory. You need to apologize for this. Eisenhower refuses to apologise, Khrushchev throws his toys out of the pram and goes home. This means nothing gets decided for a while, but then there's an opportunity. JFK becomes the president of the US, and so Khrushchev sees an opportunity. He thinks this youngest president is going to be a pushover, and he reissues his ultimatum for American troops to leave Berlin. However, this has got worse. Bay of Pigs, which we'll come on to in a later video in more detail from the Cuban Revolution, that has soured relationships, so they're not particularly good friends at the moment. Furthermore, Kennedy can't really afford to back down so early into his presidency, especially when he's been brought in, because one of the reasons Eisenhower lost the presidency is because they thought he was losing the Cold War. Kennedy will not back down, and he refuses to be intimidated, so he increases American spending by $3.2 billion on arms. That's not really the reaction Khrushchev was looking for. Effectively, his bluff has been called. He won't go to war over Berlin either. But he now can't really be seen to just back down completely. The war is a compromise in Khrushchev's mind. He still has this emigration problem of 1,800 people a day that he needs to stop happening. As I said earlier, it's a propaganda disaster for the Soviet Union. The wall, 12th of August 1961, constructed overnight, starts off as barbed wire and very quickly becomes concrete, and by the end of our period, of course, it's a very formidable fortification. Uh, it is a propaganda success for the Soviet Union initially, because the West are caught completely off guard. They never saw this coming. It looks like Khrushchev's got one up on the Americans. But in the aftermath of the Berlin Wall, it's not quite so simple. In fact, the opposite starts to happen. It becomes a very visible reminder of Soviet oppression, that we need to build a wall to keep our people in the, in the East and under communism. People don't want to be here. It makes the West 
very anti-communist, more so than it was already. It's now quite clearly a tyrannical and oppressive state. And both sides start to increase their arms spending as a direct result of the Berlin Wall crisis. Thank you very much. And goodbye.